some more elite execution. This one's for a gold double inside week break. Um, so this trade was done on the 14th of May. All right, let's have a little look at the candles. So uh, this is the day right here. This is one minute candles for gold. Um, as you can see earlier on in the European session, we've come up, tested some highs, come up, tested them again, and then finally breaking out. Uh, these two lines here um, are the inside weeks and this one here is a prior day's high so anyway what we're going to look at in the video soon is just the push up um, through here to break yesterday's high and then to go on and start taking out this sort of like inside week structure um, before we get into that though let's go through the background for this trade and look at why um, why we want to take it so we're going to answer that question with just these two charts if we go to this one that we've got sort of cramped in here on the left that's the gold daily chart um basically it goes back a lot further than we need to I and mean, you can see here sort of this chunk up here is april's trade um and then the sort of the first half of may and what you can see here is that we've got this you know markets pushed up higher and then it started forming this this wedge right this compression you've just got you know up and down and up and down but each time you know we're getting sort of higher lows and lower highs and so all of the positioning in the market's getting more and more compressed and then what you see you know over these last three candles in this market just sort of like accumulating and pushing up accumulating and pushing up and we can see this again over here in the hourly candle so this is taking most of what you can see here um now in fact if we just go back to this for one second you can see here that this sort of week here has the higher high but actually it also has a higher low than the following week so um, there is no inside week structure from there so it sort of starts with kind of the week that makes up the days that make up this week here so that's what we see here so each of these um, dividing lines here is a week's worth of trade and so the high here I've just drawn the line across then the high of the next week um, comes in across here you can see that this week's quite this week's high is quite congested um, and you've got this quite flat structure here it also aligns with another level over here um, yeah then this week sort of like push down uh, push lower but this low is a higher low than the week before um, as you're expecting and then yeah we've come into the, the next week following okay we've got a higher low here pushed up got another sort of like quite um blunt kind of very low excess uh or no excess sort of high on this week which is again lower than the prior week's high uh then we fall into this week and we've got again a lower low you can always draw a line between these saying well, okay here's your support um and then the market has pushed up and here's the prior day's high and you know earlier on in this session we've got sort of like false break false break false break and then we go so um in terms of you know putting this trade together you've got all this sort of like really cramped inside week uh structure multiple inside week and in gold that's quite rare and if you really think about what's going on you've got really tightly compressed positions um and that's just like adding energy and adding energy and adding energy and so this becomes a really high conviction break and so you think to yourself okay once we break one we're likely to break the next and then probably quite likely to break the next um the issue with that statement is okay while that might be true in general you know i mean if we're down here and we're looking to go all the way up there it's quite a long way to go on a day so maybe you know this becomes a play that is slightly more long term um but yeah and so okay let's just look at a few other um pieces of information about this okay the friday before so here on the 8th this is non-farm payrolls so nfp um, after NFP, the market's um, sold off, hasn't taken out the low, it's come back into the NFP range. So again, here's more conviction, okay, but can't take the downside, which is tried, then okay, can we go the upside? Uh, we've had like positive price action this whole week, and then in here, this kind of like whippy trade, um, and here was sort of Powell's comments. So, you know, we've got in here, we've got a bit of... Um, you know we've, we've sort of got some sort of like shorter term um, pieces of information that kind of add up here this rejection of the downside from ENFP and then you know we're going okay well all right if we can break these highs from yesterday um, 
you know, can we then feed that into the first break here of this level? So last week's high and then the prior week's high. And that's what this, the premise of this trade is. So let's just go back over that information really quickly. Um, we have a double inside week, which is rare in gold. Um, so the positioning inside this range is really congested. Um, there's a weekly high, uh, or oh, the weekly high that we talked about um, earlier is quite congested. In fact, most of them are really congested in the sort of inside week, double inside week structure. Um, and so yeah, we can really lean on those. Um, we back in the NFP range from the prior week. Um, so here, you know, tried the downside, that didn't work so okay. Then the upside, then we talked about power as well. Um, and just the sort of like um, whipsaw trade yesterday. Um, then the market had multiple tests so earlier on or sort of between Powell's comments and um, you know the video that we are about to watch you know the markets come up and tested that sort of like three or four times and so we've got okay you know we've already got this bigger picture conviction on the upside and this conviction sort of keeps adding up you know we it keeps supporting itself as we go down through um, sort of like shorter and shorter time frames and then there was also some bullish price action um, going on during the week so you know all in all this is kind of like ticking all the boxes from the bigger picture down to the smaller picture and so then the idea for actually um, executing the trade well okay look maybe the best way to get into this trade is to break um, the sort of well I suppose the idea is a sort of inside week structure and a break to the upside and then okay how to get into this well there's a break of yesterday's high, which is a possibility, which is now weakened. You know, it's quite a sort of a low X and no X is high. It's been tested so many times and the market keeps coming back to it. So, um, you know, that's like legend itself and looking pretty vulnerable. So, okay, if the market can bid through here, then you just start to see like a cascading of position, um, you know, of people liquidating from that or putting new positions on. And so then you've got this, um, you know, this, this energy that's given you to break this, you know, to start breaking this inside week structure and attacking that. So, you know, lean on that um, so that then you're nicely positioned for the rest of it. Um, and yeah, and then think, okay, well, if we start to break one high, then maybe we should be breaking the second. And um, yeah, basically that's where this trade's going. So if we just go back to the one minute chart, what we're looking at here is this line here at um, 26 and a half. This is the uh, this is yesterday's high, and so you can see here some of the attempts to break it. Um, markets back there. Okay, so we're going to start watching in here, um, and then we're looking here. Okay, here's last week's high and the week before's, and so we just want to see. Okay, how does the market um, come up here? So we're going to watch just into here. Um, so yeah, watch this sort of putting on the position and then um, how it's managed and taking some of it off here. Uh, the trader does let it run. Um, some of it run up into here, but it gets kind of long. So yeah, let's just um, look at the start. Okay, so then the big the levels to sort of watch out for is um, 26 and a half. That's the the break of yesterday's high, and then 35 and a half is um, last week's high. Okay, so let's move to our charts. Okay, so here are the charts. Gold's this one here, so third from the right. Um, and as you can see here, we're sort of um, in around this 26 and a half level, which is right here. Um, that's uh, yesterday's high, so we obviously have kind of broken it multiple times, like little false breaks, but um, you know, we're inside the um, inside sort of the US cash session for Spoon now. So, you know, I suppose like everyone's in the market or the flows are there. So, you know, this is the time that the energy comes in. And so this is a really good time to lean on the market. So without further ado, let's get into this. Um, let's make sure I'm on the right speed. Yes, we are. And okay, so here we are at the highs and we're looking to see, okay, we're here and we want to play with the momentum. So we're really looking for energy. I guess it's gone through um, 26 and a half now and it's bidding up. Uh, where can we, you know, what, what are we seeing here now? Um, you know, we're above it, all right? Still looking for the energy, still looking for, basically what we're wanting for is the market to kind of like tip over a level where it just really has to go. Okay, and we're still watching, all right? Can we see some sort of price action sign that says, all right, I've got to get in now? 
still looking for the energy. Um, we're seeing you know small trades, a couple of lots here and there, markets moving, pushing a bit higher, so now bidding into 27.3, 4, 5. Again, as soon as your Vigo jumps in at market, it gets long, right? Then and the market sort of really just like blips on side. Um, the markets pull back, so you know 29.3. We saw someone sort of holding it, and um, there now we're pushing up, right? Trading around, auctioning around 30, so a bit higher now. Oh, pushing up higher again, so up to 31.9. Um, I right, can it extend there. No, there seems to be sort of a seller up there at the moment. Um, and so dropping back, okay, where does the market hold? It's trading around uh, where are we sort of back at um, 31s again. And so, all right, so we've, we've sort of, we saw the market option there. We've now seen um, the buy set back in there. Now, okay, can we break the highs? But the market's still holding those highs. Um, and you know now we've got to think, okay, so we've got sort of like tens, uh, or sorry, thirty ones, and these thirty twos at the highs. Okay, where where are we doing? So now, okay, look, we're back down through um, thirty one. So now we're down to sort of like thirty and a half. Okay, what we really want to see now is this to be, I suppose, like a sort of a false break of that support at thirty one. So we want to see the market bid back above there, and we don't want to see sort of support coming in by that. We don't want sort of sellers to start selling from 31s and so here we are we've got this sort of option for 31s now and the market's back above so okay you know right now we should feel confident in this run like this now that we've, we've sort of broken this we should be over that kind of that point of no return and we should have really high conviction that this trade is going to play out so i hear that we're going to take out next uh sorry the prior week's high and so again so here we are at 31s and we're just down a little bit below it, but we want to see the buyer step in like we did last time. Then we got down to about 30 and a half, and so we want to see um, that be defended. And we, ha we haven't pushed down to that price yet, so sort of we're holding the high low. Um, okay, 31s, can that, you know, can we see the buyer holding there? And for the moment, you know, it looks like that's the case. Um, we're seeing sort of like only sort of small size come through. Um, all right, so, so yeah, it looks pretty good here for holding tens. Then we, we really wanted to go ask, start asking questions about the highs. And okay, here we go. We just saw the market sort of start to bid up there, and we want to be thinking, okay, you know, can we, are we extending? You know, if we see this really like healthy option up, which is what we want to see, then obviously it's nice and easy to feel calm. But for now, you know, we want to lean on the 31s holding. Um, but yeah, and then sort of start asking questions about the 32s, which hopefully we'll get to see soon. Um, but for now, again, you know, we've got the market down there, but each time it's down there, it sort of seems that everyone, um, their buyers are stepping in. I sort of spoke too soon, because here we are down at sort of 30 and a half. Okay, and again, though, we want to see, um, we want to see this getting picked up. You know, we don't really want to see it. Um, sustaining for too long down here you like we don't want to see sellers kind of forming a base and selling from here we want to see the market um yeah bidding up out of here so here we are we sort of we're still we're still here and we're still asking that question okay can we get up right we've got a bid now sort of into um into 31s again so okay now that the market's failed um to the downside are we going to see a bid back up and so we can so we can start sort of like finding out some answers to that question about the support up at um sorry the resistance up at 32s and there we go the market was quite aggressive there pushing back up to the highs okay you know now there's a bit of energy we're seeing the market not being able to pull back very very far you know we're sort of in this tight range of four or so ticks from the top um with sort of like a good velocity of trade and there we go market um pushing up to so 32.9 and so we're seeing you know this really nice bid and ties and then again okay now we're up into the 33s right what what might the market do here so still pushing up so still being nice and aggressive okay put on some more size so um there's another clip that just went in there you know like just playing with the aggression and again and so Okay, so now we're looking right. 34s is, is, is resistance for the time being. Where can the market pull back? 
Uh, we've got the market back what at um, 33 and a half. Okay, where um, you know where is the market going to hold this time? And you know what can we ask sort of questions about the highs? So we're back at the highs. Um, we're not quite seeing the same velocity as last time when we were at the highs. I know, but we are. We are up there holding a pretty tight range against the highs, but can it go? No, it's sort of slipping back down. Okay, oh, there you go. A bit of aggression through the highs again. Got a couple of ticks. Um, now dropping back down to sort of 33 and a half, which we saw before. Um, okay, so back down to 33s. All right, can we hold here? Right, just dropped below 33s, but picked up again. So yeah, so it seems we've got a buyer here, um, reloading 33s. Okay, so there, that's your reference. Okay, you know, we want to see if the market drops down below there, we just want to see it getting picked up again. All right, and that is what we're seeing. We're seeing, you know, just absorption there. And the market's bit up a little bit off the lows now, so we're sort of um, what, 33 and a half. Right back down towards 33s again, and what we want to see, you know, some nice healthy reloading here, um, which is exactly what we're seeing. You know, we're seeing the market at 33 or higher. All right, then back to sort of 33 and a half again, trying to push back above there. Um, hasn't quite got it yet, but I suppose like right now that's. You know if you're trying to accumulate as a buyer then you know letting someone come down and sort of holding at the lows is obviously a good strategy so you know until you see that breaking you have to you know hold the assumption that the market's still really strong um and there's no reason you wouldn't i mean you've got so much vulnerable structure there right you should be thinking in your head okay you know what reasons going to have to put more on that's kind of where your head should be um, at the moment and and just almost like running with the assumption that buyers gonna hold this um, You know, you've got that such rear structure such tight positioning um, And anytime the market comes down, you know, we've seen okay, like nice reloading um, And so again, we're still holding 33s and Back up sort of 33 and a half and then now I sort of got to start asking the questions again. Okay, what can the market? um you know, what's going to do with the highs you can see that there's quite a large bid at 34s and so that should be tracked in the market which is exactly what we've seen the market's really gone there and it's pushed right through it okay and then i don't know if you just noticed but added this is the position is no bigger and then you go next ping up added some more into that as well and so um then sort of starting to take the position off so um yeah so the 35 and a half was the um prior weeks um, high and so the market has gone there so now you should be thinking okay now that the market's you know hit that kind of milestone we've gone to um, gone from breaking yesterday's high now feed into the break of last week's high you know now we should be really convicted that um, the market's going to go again that doesn't mean that the market has to keep going right now um, you know it's already had a pretty decent move there's likely to be some sort of like consolidating as well some people who got long for that maybe looking to take a little bit of profit and so now you can sort of think about well okay what do i want to do with my position um and so you can see here that that with well, that level so yes last week's um high was at, at 35 and a half and that's exactly where the market is now right we're seeing um the market holding there so this is sort of acting as um well, this is acting as support at the moment so we've got buyers stepping back in here and so now we're sort of like questioning this all right can we hold this which is what we would expect um you know given the fact that we've got sort of like such a high conviction setup and that's how um you know the trade is able to hold such great size but you can see that just above um the highs before there's some um, limit orders there to get out and so you know if, if the market's going to sort of sit here potentially for a while and kind of um and and then sort of like reposition and get itself ready for the move that we're expected to come later uh which is the next you know the inside week breaks and we've got a double 
um, you know, sort of start asking yourself, well, okay, you know, what can I do on this? And well, right, if we're expecting the market to kind of, you know, test a little bit up, test a little bit down, all right, this is an opportunity to potentially manage this position. So here you're really asking yourself, okay, um, you know, if I'm really convicted on the upside, well, all right, I'm willing to leave some of this position on. And you can see the trade has taken a little bit of it off, um, but the bulk of the position is still there. And so you've got this, you know, you, you, your question is, can I hold 35 and a half or can the market hold 35 and a half? Which, you know, from what you've seen there, the market definitely had a buyer down there. Um, and so then now you kind of go, well, okay, you know, if I've still got this bit of position on, maybe I don't want to sit in the whole position. Maybe I want to take some of it off. And then um, when the market shown me the energy for the next leg of this move to take out the week before's, um, high, you know, then maybe I'll add some of my position back on. But until then, you know, I want to try and, you know, take as much profit as I can with what I've got and sort of like a de-risk and then build my position again when I think the time's right. And so here, you know, like leaving these orders at the highs, you know, just looking to get out on the next flick high. Um, and so that's what we're seeing now. Um, or that's, you know, that's what the traders got up there couple of limit orders to sell at the highs and you can see the market is bidding up so you know that buy was at 35 and a half we're now at 36 and a half um and the market you can see is still creeping up a little higher so you know what we're looking for is the next kind of like blip up um and all right we're just sort of waiting to see that price action is also happening so we're kind of we're sitting there you know obviously above where that buy was holding um and we seem quite sticky at this price so okay you know like can the market sort of accumulate build a little bit of a base here and then push on and potentially have a go at these highs and see what's above there and uh, so now we're dropping back to sort of like the high 35s 36s low 36s so okay can we you know right maybe we've come off 36 just then or um, 35.9 so okay is 36 now a area of support all right there you go pushing higher all right and he took um some more of his position though and so there just using that that flick higher to manage that position um we can actually swap back um to the chart and you can see okay here was the first move the market came back down and this line here is at 35 and a half and that's where we kept seeing that real you know the market was quite um you know quite happy to sit here and accumulate and then you know it made that push up through the highs and that's where those limit orders were and then you can see the market just forms a bit of a balance here but you'll note that the balance is all you know quite in, in like a really um i suppose like aggressive position in the sense that you know it's finding support at that weekly high you know it does make a a false break through it but it holds back up and then holds above so you know and if everything about this and about the bigger setup should be giving you conviction to hold this and play for the bigger move and you'll see obviously from the candles later on the market does push higher doesn't quite get there comes back down finds support um, then bids through and so yeah this is the um this is kind of the crux of it and what we've seen here is a sort of early trade and just how the traders you know leaned on that the sort of like sort of bigger idea and that conviction to once the market sort of tips the scales here and the energy comes into the market just lean in and go with the aggression and then again go with the aggression and go with the aggression and build this position and just use use this sort of the fact that you know you've got all of this positioning and anyone who's kind of like trapped in here short now has got to come out of this and then sort of i suppose like anyone um yeah and i suppose, so I suppose you've got this kind of like you've got some forced positioning in here or repositioning and then you know any time that someone does that you know you, you're looking to get out on these little flicks higher and um since you've got this idea that probably the market's going to balance here for a little bit um and if not you know take that crop profit it comes out and gives you another opportunity to add in um but you know you've already had a pretty good move here so yeah just thinking about how you can manage that position and sort of takeaways from this video well Okay, so we've got this double inside weak structure, this is rare in gold, and then you think, okay, well, why is it rare? And that's probably because, um, you know, it's a pretty, it's a vulnerable structure, right? And so, 
the fact that it's turned up probably means it's not going to be there for very long and so you know that should definitely catch your interest and you should be watching that um that is if you're a gold trader um when you have sort of such mature structures like this you know so much kind of positioning um you know you can really lean on it because there's going to be a lot of people who are forced um to get out of a position um and so you know you've got it's kind of like energy and energy and energy and the more that gets sort of squeezed into a tighter and tighter range the more energy the structure's got and with this sort of like multiple weeks of you know really getting squeezed and in this position and getting really tight then you know you can lean on this and just the more it happens the higher the probability that this this um you know move is gonna is gonna um finish successfully and then um sort of the last part is about okay you know how do you access these ideas and and here you know there was this the market showed you this really nice opportunity of okay you know you're in the non-farm payrolls um days range and the market failed to push lower um after coming out of the lows from non-farm um you know and then you had some sort of uh, good price action positive bring you back into that structure and then you got those sort of you know those tests of the highs um, of yesterday's highs and the mark just kept coming back to it and back to it and you think well okay you know this is starting to get really vulnerable now so you've got this vulnerability to break out of that um, to break out of the NFP structure and then to use that to start breaking some of these you know weekly highs um, you know and it's just then about how okay that gave you such a really clean nice entry into the rest of it where you know the volatility of sort of breaking all of these um weekly highs never really put you under pressure because you had such a nice clean entry and that's kind of what makes the trade you know from the idea down to the the um the accessing of that idea just so brilliant and so yeah i think there's a lot of really good takeaways from here in terms of okay how have you gone from this big idea and build your conviction right down to the small idea to give yourself the cleanest possible entry into there and to give yourself the nicest trade